Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh to some of y'all and peace out to the rest of you. Hit the share button again because the message is more important than the messenger. This is Banger Part 2. In Banger Part 1, I uh, didn't get to mention one thing that they have in common. And I figured I'd save that for this because it's a perfect segue. And it also would keep Banger Part 1 underneath 10 minutes. If you look at these ladies in Banger Part 1 that I mentioned and you look at the men in question regarding them notice this all the men are in s non-stereotypical or non-street all of the women cannot see these men as being actual men with boundaries that need to be respected when we have always heard or seen that sisters don't look at NS black men as men, but they do look at idness, I-D-N-S, intentionally dysfunctional negative stereotype black men as men whose boundaries should be respected. We're now learning that they also look at non-black men, specifically the ones who come from origins that are known to look down on us as being men as well. They don't necessarily look at the Dominican as being men or because they're a little too negro friendly or too black adjacent not so much but they do look at the korean the chinese they don't look at the thai per se or the laotian or the cambodian men or the malaysian or the filipino men as being men but they do look at the chinese and the koreans well what do they have in common they're most likely to look down on us from amongst the asians Issa ray said it Get you one of them. Don't get the others because they're the N-words of the Asians. Now, Issa Rae done married a brother. I wish that man, I wish more of us knew this stuff so that these ladies couldn't find anybody. So that being said, um, you know, we're now finding that you pretty much have to be detrimental to black folks in order for them to see you as a man. Stop and think about that. Associated with it at least. This is why it is that when they sit up and they say that you gonna die alone for being red pill or SYSBM or passport, you must understand and realize that what they're using is a threat of something that was highly likely for you statistically speaking anyway because they can't see you as a man so that means they weren't going to respect you so if you got with some of them then when you got old and sick and about to die and your dingling currency ran out and you can't do anything to earn no more money it's the same thing they don't respect you so why they gonna take care of you so you're gonna die without them now if you got good kids and the kids are within uh, reaching distance of you, then th that lessens the chances. But you could have good kids and they just take a long time to get to you. That's happened to many a good parent and, and good, uh, good child. Um... Miss Elite, I think it was, posted in her community tab that these ex-plays and ex-pimps are now in hospice and they're old and they're alone and nobody comes to visit them and they want to tell their stories. Look, if those men did everything that sisters say they're supposed to do as real men, they still had a high chance of dying alone. How do we know? Red Femme Diaries told us so. The born again Christian who has a life expectancy that's almost up. The doctors have uh, pretty much diagnosed her as terminal. She got two sons and she wants them to know exactly what they need to understand about women. Cause she ain't gonna be around a guy than when they're old enough. She doesn't expect to be. So she's given up the game. She wants to leave that legacy. She said, my father was a stepfather before I was born. My older siblings are from another man, another dad. My mother could never respect him. And this is because women view men who are willing to become stepdads before dads 
as admitting to their own genetic inferiority. That's how they view it. Now they'll tell you that a real man will do exactly that. But when a man does that and he ain't got his own, then they see him as admitting to his own genetic inferiority. That means they'd have more respect if he committed infanticide. They would respect him more. That's the funny thing about it. Susan Smith and you won? That man said he didn't want somebody else's kids and she got rid of hers. And the funny thing is, if I'm not mistaken, she's actually been intimately involved with a guard and cost him his pension. So they want to sit up and act like you had all these options that you really didn't have to begin with. That's the sight game they're going to pull on you because by saying that you had options you didn't really have, they can still hold you accountable for things that they already predetermined were likely to happen anyway. And then they can say, that, well, that's your fault. It's always your fault. So when you're by yourself, that's your fault. When you're alone, it's your fault. Even though that's not something that they would let be up to you. They don't want most men and they don't have to. They just need to be honest about it. But what that also means in being honest is that they would then have to admit that they can't like many of you. And as a black man, you can't be black enough or white enough, statistically speaking, because, see, you got to be detrimental to your people. That's what they're looking for. So you either got to be a non-black man from an origin that, that traditionally looks down on black folks, or you got to be the black man specifically that justifies them looking down on black folks. It's got to be one of them, too. You ain't that. You in between. You ain't black enough. and You ain't white enough. And they can't respect you. And they don't want to tell you that. So that when you do everything you're supposed to do, like Red Femme Diaries' dad did, and you still wind up dying alone, even when you're married, they can sit up and just, well, you know, at that point, they don't have to really explain it to anybody. That's what her mom did to her dad. She told us. If she didn't, you know, in all honesty, if I was her, and I didn't have a terminal illness, I would pretend I did. Because let's be honest, if them women saw her and she was younger and she didn't have something terminal they would, and they knew who she was, they'd try to kill her. I stated that in the last one. Because you ain't got to really be a pick me or you don't have to be a pushover for them to consider you a pick me. And if you were young and nice looking, and you're a so-called pick me because you're fair to men, just being fair to men, they'll try to dox you and maybe even kill you. I'd be, I'm, I'm sure they would try that. So if she didn't have something terminal, I'd pretend like she, and I was in her shoes and wanted to do this and still show my face, I would still pretend. Act like I got something terminal. You can understand why. It's not hatred, it's just, it's how it works. It's how they insist on it. So with that being said, when they hold that over your head about you uh, being likely to die alone because you're SYSBM or passport, somehow you red pill. In other words, you're aware of the effery and the games and the deception. That's another lie right there. That was likely statistically to happen anyway. Thanks for listening. Black heart, black mind, blackout. Assalamu alaikum again in black heterosexual non-select male power just because they don't like it and black patriarchy until extinction or judgment day.